Welcome to the Mayo Clinic Cardiovascular Continuing Medical Education Podcast. Join us each week to discuss the most pressing topics in cardiology and gain valuable insights that can be directly applied to your practice. Well, welcome. I'm Dr. Steve Kopetsky at Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. It's our, my pleasure today to speak with Dr. Randy Thomas, who's a professor of medicine and has been the director of our cardiovascular rehabilitation unit for years. Randy, let me ask you about the current status of cardiac rehabilitation, including the benefits, which we know are many, but also the challenges and efforts to overcome these challenges. Yeah, thanks, Steve. It's good to be able to speak with you today about this. Uh, cardiac rehabilitation is a class one recommendation for a number of cardiovascular conditions. The benefits, as you mentioned, are many, and uh, the evidence is mounting to show benefits of short and longer term outcomes for patients who participate in cardiac rehabilitation. The challenges are mainly to and get those patients who are eligible for cardiac rehabilitation to receive the program and the benefits of cardiac rehabilitation. There are many people who live far away from a program. They have uh, time restraints. They may not be interested in participating. There's a number of reasons at the patient, provider, and societal level that limit the participation in cardiac rehabilitation. There have been policy changes, including reimbursement changes, including performance measures and quality metrics that are being used to help improve the um, delivery of cardiac rehabilitation to patients who need cardiac rehabilitation. So it's promising to see that these things are happening, but we still unfortunately see a very large number of people who don't receive cardiac rehabilitation who need it. So it's very interesting that uh, we know that it's beneficial, but everyone doesn't, uh, doesn't participate. What is the national average now for participation when appropriate in cardiac rehab? So if you look at the Medicare data, which would just be the patients over 65, of course, that is, is around 25 to 30 percent of all eligible patients are receiving cardiac rehabilitation. If you look at certain centers, however, uh, those centers are getting somewhere around 65, 75 percent participation rates when they're applying systematic approaches to improve rehabilitation participation. But nationally, it's quite low, about 25, 30%. And when you say systematic approaches, you mean just uh, have a, an algorithm for making sure the patient knows about the rehab and is referred? Yeah, the studies have shown pretty strikingly that if you do some pretty simple things, participation rates improve significantly. So for example, in the hospital, to have a, a system in place, an automatic referral system, so the patients are referred to an outpatient program and that there is a person in the hospital who serves as a navigator or a coach to help them know how to get to the program after they leave the hospital. Just those two simple approaches improve participation rates up to around 70%. So it's pretty striking that simple steps like those can make such a big difference. So it sounds like you have to focus not only on the the generation of the referral, meaning educating our colleagues that to have patients in the hospital, but also focus somewhat on the patient to help them navigate the system and make sure they can do the rehab. Is that so? It's a 50 50 split, it sounds like. Is that correct? That's correct. And in fact, the performance measures kind of get to that, that it's something that we are responsible for as providers, but it's also a joint effort with the patient. Oh, that's great. So, what other emerging solutions that can help overcome these challenges? What else do you see coming along? Well, actually, starting in the 1980s, there were home-based approaches that were, that were tested, developed, and uh, found to be effective alternatives to center-based cardiac rehabilitation. And the thinking is that that might help overcome some of the logistical barriers for some patients. So since the 1980s, there have been studies that have been showing the benefits of looking at a home-based approach. But unfortunately, for a variety of reasons, uh, some of them financial, some of them coverage issues, the, the home-based approaches have not really taken off as much. Now with more evidence uh, mounting, that is changing. And in times when the patient's ability to come into a center for, for care, such as what we're experiencing now with the 
COVID-19 uh, outbreak, but in similar times when patient um, participation in the center-based program might be limited, home-based approaches are becoming more and more available and more and more acceptable. So are we actually starting that now here at Mayo or nationwide is starting to pick up more, the, the home-based solutions? It is. Uh, all, all of the above, the answer would be yes. There, as I mentioned, mounting um, studies of, of evidence that uh, home-based approaches produce similar benefits to, um, home, to center-based uh, programs, at least as far as uh, control of risk factors and so forth. And as a result, there are a number of, of places the Kaiser system in California, the VA system throughout the United States, uh, other programs around the country, including here at Mayo Clinic, have home-based approaches that provide these solutions to patients now. Oh, that's great to hear. What is the patient's reaction to this? And then is it been, is it been covered as well by third-party payers? There's some mixed responses to patients. Some patients prefer that approach because of the convenience. Uh, some patients prefer to be in the center because of the social interaction. So it varies a bit depending upon the person. Home-based uh, care uh, is uh, currently being covered by Medicare because of the emergency status that we're in now with the COVID-19 outbreak. And it looks like several um, private payers, commercial payers, and other institutions, including the VA program, as I mentioned, and Kaiser, are uh, covering the home-based approach more and more. That's excellent to hear. Do you have any outcomes data yet? Do we know it's as, as effective? So in the short term, we do know. We, we know that um, fixed physical activity, quality of life, cardiovascular risk factor control, are, those are similar in the home-based approaches compared to center-based approaches. What we don't know still is whether or not the longer-term outcomes, such as mortality, rehospitalization, are those uh, similar for home-based approaches to center-based. We, we still don't know that. So that, that needs to be studied more. Okay. So Randy, what if you can uh, get out your crystal ball for a moment and tell us what's rehab going to look like five or 10 years from now? Will it be a mixture of uh, hospital-based and at home or where do you think it's going to go? Yeah, I think that's exactly where we're headed. I think it's going to be a hybrid approach, individualized approach. We'll have core components that we know work the different components of improving physical activity, nutrition, medication adherence, uh, taking care of comorbid conditions, et cetera. So those, those core components will be in place, but the delivery of those components will be personalized to make it uh, more appropriate for each patient. For some patients, they may come into the center for the first few uh, sessions and then be transitioned more to a home-based approach. There are some people who need to be in the center for all of their sessions because perhaps they're higher risk patients, post-transplant, uh, LVAD patients, et cetera. And there may be some people who can do pretty much everything from home, but that'll be individualized, personalized, and uh, then of course, we'll make sure that the quality of care is maintained wherever the delivery takes place. Well, those are all wonderful thoughts. Thank you, uh, Randy, for shedding light on this area, which is changing very rapidly. So it's been my pleasure to speak with Dr. Randy Thomas, today our Director of Cardiovascular Rehabilitation. Thank you, Randy, for joining us. Thank you, Steve. Pleasure to be here. Thank you for joining us today. Feel free to share your thoughts and suggestions about the podcast by emailing cvselfstudy at mayo.edu. Be sure to subscribe to the Mayo Clinic Cardiovascular CME podcast on your favorite platform and tune in each week to explore today's most pressing cardiology topics with your colleagues at Mayo Clinic.